When should a parent get an increase in child support going back a few years based on the other parent's higher income over those years? This is called retroactive child support or back child support. An increase in the parent's income who is paying child support is often the reason for a change in child support, including retroactive child support. Of course, you can also get a retroactive child support order that decreases child support for previous years as well. Hi, my name is Thomas O'Malley. I'm an experienced family lawyer in Durham Region and the GTA. The general rule is the date of effective notice that there should be an increase in child support is to be used as the date to which child support, child support should be made retroactive. However, the Ontario Family Court will not make an order for retroactive child support to a date more than three years before formal notice was given to the parent paying the child support, also known as the payor parent. Once the parent receiving child support that's the recipient parent, has raised the issue of child support, the payor parent can no longer continue to assume that the status quo or that the current amount of child support paid is a fair amount. In some situations, the appropriate date will be the date when increased child support should have been paid. The situation will arise when the payor parent engages in blameworthy conduct. For the purpose of setting a start date, blameworthy conduct includes not disclosing a change in income that would reasonably alter or change the amount of child support that should be paid. The Family Court will review four main factors to decide whether a recipient parent should receive a retroactive child support order. First, reasonable excuse for delay. Delay is not presumptively justifiable. The parent seeking retroactive child support must show a reason for not seeking an increase in child support sooner. On the other hand, the court should be open to practical concerns related to these court applications, such as fear of retaliation or limited financial means on part of the recipient parent. Number two, conduct of the payor parent. The court must consider the blameworthy conduct of the payor parent. This includes any behavior that shows that the payor parent is putting their interests over the child's right to an appropriate amount of child support. Number three, circumstances of the child. The court must consider both the past and present circumstances of the child. A child who is currently enjoying a high standard of living may benefit less from a retroactive child support order. Past hardship can be an important consideration. Where the child enjoyed the advantages he or she would have had the payor paying, had the payer parent fully met their obligations, the argument for retroactive child support is definitely weaker. Number four, hardship that could be caused by a retroactive child support order. Before granting a retroactive child support order, a court must consider whether doing so would lead to hardship for the payor parent or others who the payor parent supports. Though the payor parent should have made the payments in the past, enforcing the obligation now can cause complications that would not have existed otherwise. You can quickly see how the complicated issue of retroactive child support becomes. I will discuss some examples of retroactive child support situations in another video. Make sure you spend some time with your family lawyer discussing this important issue in your family law case. If you have any questions about your separation, divorce, or family law case, and you'd like our help, there's a few ways to contact our office. You can leave a message on my Facebook law office page, that's O'Malley Family Law. Visit my website at www.CanadianDivorceLegalAdvice.com or call me directly at 905-434-8837. We would be happy to speak to you.
Oh, by the way, did you know you can protect your family law rights and get essential information on settling your family law issues with your former spouse with the daily indispensable family law advice and tips on my free Facebook group? Go to Facebook and search Durham Region Separation and Divorce Legal Support Group in the top search bar. You'll find the group and join. Thanks for watching this video and have a great week.